Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and the boys are back in town with a season 4 trailer. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down the teaser and going through the Easter eggs and all the hidden details. The new season starts on June 13th and they're dropping three episodes to kickstart the season. We will be here for your weekly breakdowns and bring you everything from the comfort of your home. So come take a butchers with us at the trailer because there's lots of things going on. This will contain some spoilers from the comics and also some talk about what happened in Gen V. I highly recommend that you give that a watch if you haven't and if you enjoy the video then please hit the thumbs up. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into the boys season 4. Now just for some background info, Homeland is on trial at the moment due to the end of season 3. The social media accounts have been keeping us up to date and no prices for guessing what this is playing off of. I will try and keep my personal politics out of the video because I'm sure my American viewers you don't want a Brit lecturing you on politics. If we do talk about them though it'll be things the creative team have said as it's pretty difficult to avoid this stuff with the boys. Anyway we begin at the boys base the Flatiron which was also their headquarters in the comics. Here we find a remorseful Billy Butcher who's now looking back on his life. Just in case you don't know, the guy's been given a death sentence and this was after his overuse of V24. That's given him about 18 months to live and now he's here reflecting on his life. The latter years of it were about taking down the soups and now he wants to go out with a bang. I think Butch is someone who's always stood up to bullies and this calls all the way back to his childhood. His brother was brutally abused by his dad and now he's seeing Ryan being led by someone like that. To make matters worse, it seems to be working with Ryan going to Homelander instead of him. I think this season it'll be father versus father with the soul for Ryan being what this battleground is for. Throughout the teaser it looks like Ryan's going down a dark path but I do get the feeling that he sees the wrong within it. Eric Kripke's compared the situation to the sitcom My Two Dads and huge shoutouts to Collider for compiling some info about this and talking about every time he's touched upon it in an interview. They stated that Kripke views Butcher and Homelander as parallels, stating he considers their relationship like Batman and the Joker. He said that, aside from a deep personal hatred, there lies an intimate understanding of one another, with stakes rising as Ryan grows up. He said, these two men have much more in common than they like to admit, and has stated the next season will also focus on the rise of Victoria Newman. He has spoiled things and said that she's a morally grey soup in the White House, so we do kind of know where things will be going with her character. Still though, I think Ryan's going to be the heart of it and after he kills that guy, I believe he's going to have a change of heart. However, Billy isn't going to take it lying down and the chance that he could go either way so I think he's going to focus on trying to get Ryan back. Billy regrets the messes that he's made and how he doesn't have time to fix them. Zooming in on his head, we see the stress at V24's cause but I do think that he's still going to use it. Not like he's not dying anyway and I believe this is how he'll fight Black Noir. Now from here we cut to Homelander who sat by himself. To me it perfectly paints out the two sides as Billy's with his friends whereas he has no one. I think Homelander really has a tragic side to him as the guys never really had a family. Raised in a lab and then brought into a corporation his entire life he's been told that he's a god. Not trying to sound sympathetic but in the end this has left him truly alone. This is what these two opposing shots show as Billy is people that will always be there for him. Cutting to a shot of his friends, we see Mother's Milk wearing a black sheep sweater, carrying on the notion of him wearing hip hop related clothing. Now while Billy has friends and Homelander doesn't, what Homelander has is his followers. Followers are something that these days we associate with social media but back in the day it had a much more mythical sense. You know, Jesus, religious figures, they had people that follow them and Homelander wants to weaponize this feeling. He says that he wants them to become like gods and this is the only way to be above the law. I don't even think the trial for Homelander has any worth as he's basically someone that is completely above humanity. They couldn't detain him or hold him in place and he truly is a superman who can't be held down. His actions have divided the country and we cut to a protest between the two sides. One side is the Starlighters and they're packing a poster that plays off the classic resist one. Others say Homelander's a fascist and just say no. As we pull out we can see one that says jail time when it's going down outside the New York County Courthouse. This is obviously the scene of Homelander's trial with his supporters then breaking out into a fight. Going back to that opening of Homie in his room, this is a similar thing to what we got at the start of the season 3 trailer. Every time focus is given to Homelander's back you know obviously you're going to think about the American flag. The season is going to clearly be a battle for the country and during an election year you can see a lot of political illusions. Now we also see the body of someone which I'm guessing might be one of the human political figures that gets tied up. This includes Cameron Coleman who we see is being gagged with the deep behind him. 
He does run propaganda for the group and I'm a bit surprised that they're holding him captive. Potentially though, he's had a change of heart or they want to threaten him by controlling the message further. You also see the return of Senator Calhoun, who was a minor figure during season one. He got a, got a little too close to another soups and this was used as blackmail material. I think they'll be doing something similar here and using him as a way to get power. I really believe that Homelander will run for president and that will be the direction that they take things. All the posters, they seem like they're election rally posters and yeah, this is backed up in the very next shot. Cutting to one of his rallies, we then see the new soups coming out on stage. They are Firecracker and Sister Sage. Neither appear in the comics, so no pre real predictions for where we can go with it. However, when discussing the pair, Kripke said the following. These soups are some of the best and craziest ever written for the boys. You are going to love them. And by love, I mean be absolutely horrified and a tiny bit nauseous. Welcome to the family, you guys. Now, Black Noir has also returned too, and we've done a big breakdown thinking about why this could be. I do think he might be reanimated, and this is something that happened in the comics. There are zombie soups in that, and that's due to the compound V overcharging their systems. Upon death, it fires up their brains, and they then reanimate and come back to life. Also, you can tell the editors don't work weekends, can't you? I know you can. Anyway, it's possible that Sam from Gen V is behind him too, which seems to be the most popular theory. He is returning along with Kay, and it's great seeing them integrating a spin-off show so much. It really feels like that was the boys season 3.5, and yeah, I loved seeing those characters popping up here. Now, if for whatever reason you haven't seen that show, I'm going to spoil the ending, uh, so duck out the video in case you don't want to know. You still here? Well, that, that show had a virus being developed in the school. This attached itself to the cells of Compound V, and in the end, it only targeted soups. Completely killing them, this could wipe them all out, and we end with Butcher coming across the experiments. Just before that, we had Homelander watching things fall into place, and this was after he'd arrived at the school and apprehended our heroes. They were going to take the fall for what had been a massacre, with him watching from Vought Tower as the messages piled in. Now, sadly, Chance Padermo passed away, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, and they were meant to be filming season 2 of Gen V right about now, I think. That has been pushed back, we don't know how they're going to handle it, and uh, yeah, unfortunately that's been delayed, and we'll see how they kind of integrate things further down the line. Either way, extremely sad news, and, and from this point, Ashley witnesses the murders, and I think she's going to start having questions. Alongside Ashley, she might realise she's let the monster out of the box, and there's no way that she can now control the Seven. The CIA are clearly amping up their interests too, as at this point we see Jeffrey Dean Morgan. It's been said he's playing an agent, though I don't believe we know the character's name just yet. Now I am wondering if he is going to be based around Mallory from the comics. I know the show had the character, but they gender swapped him there, and this could be her ex-husband or something along those lines. I don't know, mate. They haven't said, and I'm a moron. And can you tell? The editor's off this weekend, mate. Can you tell? Now, he's worried that soups are taking over and that humans are going to be dropped off into camps. This is something I was touched upon in the comics with Homelander starting a soups uprising. Storming the White House, he tried to take over and he saw his kind as being the master race. The only way to beat him is with the virus and we see Billy and Co then going to a lab. We also know they're doing experiments with Compound V as later in the trailer we see that chicken chest burster. In my reaction video, I did wonder if this was a soups chicken because they had the alpaca called Sloan in Gen V. Due to the crazy sheep later on though, I think it's just animal experiments and they may be doing one of two things. That's the humans potentially finding a way to make the virus more deadly or maybe the soups trying to find a way to counter it. Either way, it's all going down and we know Black Noir will fight Butcher at the Flatiron. Cutting to a wide shot of it, we see Singer and Newman's election campaign posters highlighting that they're rolling out in full force. We also see one I believe is for Vought on Ice, which we of course see later in the teaser. Anyway, Black Noir is busting him up, and War is announced on the Starlight as by Firecracker. Gonna get some girl on girl action, and it looks like she's finally met her match. I'm guessing their powers are similar too, with their powers potentially being based around light. Firecracker makes me think it might be some Johnny Storm thing, and let me know below exactly what you think. However, it might be that she's a Punisher-like figure, as we do see her firing a pistol later on. A firecracker, you know, it all ties in with guns, so potentially that is the thing, and I've just wasted your time talking about Johnny Storm, but you're still here, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate it more if you hit the thumbs up. It's a Saturday, mate, and the editors are off, so I'm handling this myself, and that's why it's rubbish. Shabow! Now we also have a girl that many have theorised as Victoria Newman's daughter, with her powers finally starting to manifest. 
Looking at you, A-Train, who's clearly also dealing with the fact that bad things are happening. I love the character and can't wait to see the arc he goes on as he genuinely seems to have grown as a person. The first thing we saw him do was basically killing Robin, but now he's grown and seems like he wants to take some responsibility. Cutting to a hospital, we see someone draped in blood and it looks like they've stepped right out of a horror movie. We also see a believed poster for Homelander and their bloody footprints all along the floor. No idea what's going on here, but a long shot here, it might be tied into the reanimation thing that we talked about before. We then see Kimiko at a toy duck factory, smashing someone like the like button. Bubbles pop out of their heads, and I think this might be a fantasy like the musicals in season 3. Returning though is our guy Stretch Armstrong from the Believe Expo, who gave a new meaning to the phrase come to Jesus. There it was Ezekiel, who we see getting his arm frozen and smashed off. Religion is becoming a big thing that's tied into politics, with it often being weaponized so followers side with certain sides. I think in season 1 that's what that section was for, with it showing that there are darker sides to faith. Huey says that they need to start acting human in order to win, and we get some clips as the trailer ramps up. We do have a soup also ripping off their own face, and I am a bit curious about what this is. Don't think I can show it on YouTube because mate, I'm, I'm getting demonetized for showing blood for a split second. But yeah, that's got me thinking it might be a playoff Deadpool. Not the good one, the one from X-Men Origins. And yeah, th this just bit, it just looks a bit crazy. Anyway, that wraps up the trailer and huge thank you for going through it with me. We did do a reaction earlier in the day. So if you want to see my more general thoughts on it, then head over there after this. If not, then thank you for sitting through the video. And if you want to support the channel, then please click the join button. You get early access to videos like this every week and it goes a massive way towards helping us out. Huge thank you for joining me on the weekend. It is the weekend, mate, so please hit the thumbs up. And with that out of the way, I'll see you next time. I've been Paul, mate. You've been the best and I'll see you next time. And make sure you're back for our breakdown of the boys. Without the way, have a good weekend. I'm off. Peace.